Today's top stories. The Philippines shows improvement in its fight against corruption in the latest Corruption Perception Index. Lawmakers approve a bill reviving mandatory ROTC in senior high school. The government is set to open a job fair for the displaced workers of Hanjin Heavy Industries in Subic. And students in Baguio City write letters to President Duterte asking to save a pine tree park. Good day, I'm Pia Rosas Morato. Welcome to the PNA Newsroom. The Philippines has been proven to strengthen its drive against corruption with an improved ranking in the Corruption Perception Index. Malacanang has called on the public to do its share to stop the spread of corruption. Rom Dufo has a story. Malacanang has reiterated President Duterte's commitment to combat corruption as the Philippines received its best score in the Corruption Perception Index in five years. The Philippines significantly improved in the 2018 Corruption Perception Index conducted by the Transparency International. The country climbed 12 notches from 111th to 99th place out of 180 countries. It is the highest score since 2013 and the best under the Duterte administration. Presidential spokesman Sal Panelo hailed the administration's anti-corruption efforts while reiterating that eradicating corruption is a long-term process. He says they commit not just to improve the country's ranking but to stay on track in ending its culture in government. Some of the efforts being done by the administration are the launch of the 8888 hotline for citizens' complaints, issuance of an order on freedom of information or FOI, and cutting of red tape in line agencies. For the PNA Newsroom, I'm Rom Dufo. The Department of National Defense has discouraged the suspension of the second Bangsamoro Organic Law plebiscite on February 6. This despite the explosions that hit a church in Holosulu over the weekend. Defense Secretary Delphine Lorenzana says the bombing happened far from the areas where the second plebiscite will take place. Sulu was the only province of the autonomous region in Muslim Mindanao that voted against the measure. Lorenzana says he has yet to see any connection between the twin bombings in Hulo and the grenade-throwing incident at the Zamboanga City Mosque. Malacanang warns against the implementation of a re-enacted budget for this year. This as Senate President Tito Soto proposed to withdraw the Senate version of the 2019 proposed budget to dispel doubts regarding allegations of insertions. Presidential spokesperson Salvador Panelo says ordinary citizens will be hit hard by the re-enacted budget as it will reduce job opportunities resulting from government projects. This will have a domino effect on the economy as well as the government's programs on poverty reduction, health and peace and security. The Commission on Elections says aspirants in this year's midterm elections have until February 11 to remove their posters, tarpaulins, and other campaign propaganda. Comelec spokesperson James Menes says every bit of campaign propaganda will automatically be in violation of campaign rules by February 12. Once the campaign period starts, all the campaign materials can only be placed in common poster areas defined by local election officers. Campaign posters and tarpaulins are also expected to have appropriate sizes. Comelec says it will create a group and will coordinate with local government units to dismantle illegal campaign posters and tarpaulins. Jimenez reminds us parents in the forthcoming polls to comply with campaign spending rules as provided by the law. Malacanang orders the government to support the hosting of the 30th Sea Games and Filipino nurses hired in Germany are set to receive a wage hike. More on these and other news around the metro from Benj Bondok. Malacanang has directed the entire government to extend support in connection with the country's hosting of the 30th Southeast Asian Games this year. Under Memorandum Circular No. 56, all government agencies and instrumentalities including government-owned or controlled corporations and local government units, are encouraged to extend their support in the preparation, organization, and holding of the 30th Sea Games. The new Clark City Sports Complex in Tarlac, along with other sports facilities in Subic, Manila, and Tagaytay, will serve as venues of the 2019 Sea Games. Filipino nurses in Germany will get an additional 100 euros in their salary starting this month. The German government has announced the increase of the minimum wage for nurses 
hired through the Triple Win project. Meanwhile, the Philippine Airlines apologized for the inconvenience brought by the aircraft that got stuck at the Ninoy Aquino International Airport taxiway intersection on Tuesday night. At least six flights were diverted to Clark after PAL flight PR353 from Macau was stuck in the taxiway. All the flight's passengers were safe and disembarked in a normal manner. For the PNA Newsroom, I'm Bench Bondo. Still to come, lawmakers approve a bill reviving mandatory ROTC in senior high school. The government is set to open a job fair for the displaced workers of Hanjin Heavy Industries in Subic. Warn these when the PNA Newsroom continues. January 18, Biernes, Cotabato City. Hinimok ni Paulong Rodrigo Ro Duterte ang Moro Community na bumoto pabor sa ratifikasyon ng Bangsa Moro Organic Law. I am therefore issuing this call to my foremost, Hello Moro. Let us use the plebiscite as a peaceful means to finally correct the historical injustice committed against the Moro, Bangsa Moro people. O the Moro people of Mindanao. Let us forget the bitterness of the past and look forward to the future. Which means, ladies and gentlemen, mga mahal kong mga moro brother or sister, magboto kayo ng yes. January 21, Lunes, Malacanang. Tinanggap ng Pangulo ang credentials ng mga bagong ambasador mula sa Lithuania, Peru, Republic of the Gambia, Republic of Sudan, Turkmenistan, at Uganda. Nag-courtesy call din sa Pangulo si Japanese Ambassador Koji Haneda. January 22, Martes, Lucena City. Panauhing pandangal si Pangulong Duterte sa taunang assembly ng Provincial Union of Leaders Against Illegality. January 23, Miercoles, Pasay City. Dumalo ang Pangulo sa Tricycle Operators and Drivers Association o TODA Summit sa Coneta Astrodome. Ako po si Secretary Martin Andanar. At ito ang Duterte on Duty. Abangan sa susunod na linggo ang mga gagawin ng Pangulo. The House Committee on Basic Education and Culture on Wednesday approved a bill seeking to revive the mandatory ROTC training for senior high school students. The panel's approval came more than two months after President Rodrigo Duterte urged Congress to expedite the restoration of ROTC. The approved bill seeks to amend Republic Act No. 7077 or the Citizen Armed Forces of the Philippines Reservist Act, which was enacted in 1991. Under the proposed measure, ROTC training would apply to all students in grades 11 and 12 in all senior high schools and public and private educational institutions. The bill aims to instill patriotism, values, and adherence to the Constitution is being supported by the Department of Education and the Department of National Defense. 
The government holds a job fair for the displaced workers of Hanjin Heavy Industries. More on this from Miguel Hill. The government's Build, Build, Build team is set to hold a job fair on February 9 at the Subic Bay Freeport Zone to provide employment to displaced workers of Hanjin Heavy Industries and Construction Philippines. The jobs caravan is expected to gather around 70 employers from different contractors involved in the infrastructure program of the government. At least a thousand jobs will be made available at the caravan including vacancies for construction workers, welders, carpenters, engineers, and administrative staff. The Department of Labor and Employment has conducted profiling on over 2,000 Hanjin workers to address the job skill mismatch problem. Job seekers may pre-register for the job caravan at the SBMA gym. For the PNA Newsroom, I am Miguel Hill. The Davao City Police Office is coordinating with church leaders regarding Mayor Sara Duterte's no backpacks policy. Police Senior Inspector Maria Teresita Gaspan says they are asking religious leaders to cooperate with authorities in strengthening security and worship sites following the recent bombing in Holosulu. Apart from the security outside, Gaspan says they will also deploy undercover operatives inside the churches to monitor the situation should there be suspicious actions. Orion Bataan is placed under a state of calamity following a huge fire incident. Meanwhile, FIVOX seeks to boost earthquake preparedness in Iloilo City. More on these and other stories from the provinces from Joyce Kudis. In Bataan, the municipal government of Orion placed Barangay Kapunitan under a state of calamity following a huge fire incident that caught on more than 900 houses. One person died from the fire while over a thousand families were affected. The families have been evacuated to the Kapunitan Elementary School after which they will be relocated to Barangay Daan Pari in Orion. In Iloilo City, national pilot for the nationwide simultaneous earthquake drill will be held on February 21. The city was chosen upon the recommendation of the Philippine Institute for Volcanology and Seismology. The drill aims to raise public awareness and test Iloilo City's preparedness. In Davao City, the local government plans to mount cameras in six river channels to monitor water levels during heavy rainfall. The City Disaster Risk Reduction and Management Office said the cameras will be set up in Lipadas River, Matina, Talomo, Davao River, Bunawan, and Lasang. The early warning system will enable the CDRRMO to estimate how fast the water can flow to the urban area. Meantime, the city has a 911 hotline and barangay volunteers ready to respond and help maintain its zero casualty target. For the PNA Newsroom, I am Joyce Kudis. Up next, the Science Department encourages businesses to get involved in the country's future space program. Students in Baguio City write letters to President Duterte asking to save a pine tree park. The PNA Newsroom returns after these reminders.
The government says the country is not lacking in construction workers. Build, Build, Build Project Chairman Ana May Lamentillo gave the assurance amid the numerous infrastructure projects set to be implemented by the Duterte administration. She said the country does not lack manpower when it comes to construction workers and there are overseas Filipino workers who are returning to the country to help. She, however, admitted that the country lacks workers that can operate more advanced machines and construction equipment, such as those used in inter-island construction projects. Business will benefit from the establishment of a space agency in the country. DOST Secretary Fortunato de la Peña says, Businesses can explore opportunities in new areas once the Philippines focuses more on space technology. He says the manufacturing sector and those who would make components for satellites are among the enterprises that would benefit the most. The use of space technology could send early warnings when the country is threatened by natural disasters. It could help the country to be more resilient. The Philippines was able to produce two Filipino-made micro-satellites, the Diwata-1 and the Diwata-2. In our foreign news, nine people were hurt in a pile of, of 29 cars in Yongjin, South Korea. Yongjin police said the accident happened when a ready-mixed concrete truck rammed into vehicles in the morning. The truck driver said his vehicle's brake system malfunctioned. The exact cause of the crash is still being investigated. Baguio City is a city of progress, but for a group of children, progress may come at the cost of destroying nature. This is why they have asked President Duterte to help stop the sale of a park that is home to a portion of Baguio Streets. Joyce Gutis has a story. Several elementary pupils asked President Rodrigo Duterte to help save the Pine Tree Park beside the Baguio Convention Center. The children turned over 67 letters from students of Baguio Pines Family Learning Center to Mayor Mauricio Dumogan, which they asked to be transmitted to President Duterte. The students say preserving the environment is important in providing fresh and clean air for the people of Baguio. The Pine Tree Park is a property of GSIS, which was a subject of sale negotiation with the city government. GSIS had pegged the property's price at 670 million pesos. Several sectors in the city expressed concern that the Pine Tree Forest will soon vanish. This is due to reports that the Manila-based company owning several malls have expressed interest in the property. Dumagan, in an earlier interview, reiterated that the city is very willing to buy the property if only to preserve the Pine Tree Park, the only remaining forest area at the city's central business district. For the PNA Newsroom, I am Joyce Kudis. Let's now check out the weather forecast for Metro Manila and the rest of the country. Here's another look at today's top stories. The Philippines shows improvement in its fight against corruption in the latest Corruption Perception Index. Lawmakers approve a bill reviving mandatory ROTC in senior high school. The government is set to open a job fair for the displaced workers of Hanjin Heavy Industries in Subic. And students in Baguio City write letters to President Duterte asking to save a pine tree park. Thank you for watching another edition of the PNA Newsroom. To check out these and other stories, visit the PNA website or follow the Philippine News Agency on Facebook and Twitter. For more stories about the government and how it serves the Filipinos, look for these hashtags in all of our social media platforms and websites. And that's your daily dose of the latest news and information that you need to know from the PNA Newsroom. I'm Pia Rosas Morato. Good day.